Star Citizen is something of a contentious subject. Most of that is due to how very little people actually know about the game. And that's no surprise, as its history is a bit muddy even to its backers. It has been a long road since the Kickstarter campaign back in 2011. The project Chris Roberts pitched was Squadron 42, a narrative-driven single-player game that would bring back the glory days of Wing Commander and Freelancer. It would have an online mode called Star Citizen, which would not have been too different from what GTA Online is today to GTA 5. Here is the muddy part. At some point in 2014 or 2015, Chris Roberts had the idea of expanding the scope of Star Citizen beyond what it was at that time. The ships had detailed interiors that players could move around in. However, much like Starfield today, landing at landing zones was a cutscene, and the landing zones were rather limited spaces. The expansion of Star Citizen would make planets fully realized, meaning ships could make seamless transitions from space flight to atmospheric flight and land anywhere, rather than just at landing zones. And the landing zones themselves would have separate starports with a real-time mass transit system connecting them. However, by that time, considerable work had already been put into Star Citizen and thousands of backers had invested millions into the project. This change to the scope of Star Citizen would be a drastic undertaking. Also, Star Citizen would be decoupled from Squadron 42 and become its own separate game. It is theorized that the decision to take Star Citizen in this bold new direction wasn't made by Chris Roberts himself or anyone at Cloud Imperium Games. Instead, a poll was posted to Spectrum, the Star Citizen forums, where the backers were given a chance to vote yes or no. They voted yes. Sometime later, Chris Roberts unveiled Star Citizen Alpha 3.0 at CitizenCon, and the project has been on that path ever since. This new Star Citizen would not be able to reach its full potential without some cutting-edge technology on the server side. Problem is, this technology didn't exist anywhere. Do Your Universe tried, and eventually gave up. CIG would have to invent it from scratch, and doing so has taken a better part of a decade. The two most difficult technologies CIG struggles with has been persistence and server meshing. Well, persistent Entity Streaming, or PEZ for short, is on its third attempt. Their first two attempts worked until they tried to scale it up. It was the same with the third. It worked until they tried to scale it up. This nearly ended the project. 2023 was a rough year for CIG. The game was barely playable, but eventually they were able to make Pez work. In fact, it kind of worked too well in a lot of ways. Pez was important for server meshing, but not as essential as the replication layer. Now, this is a oversimplification, but when an online game client connects to a server, it connects to a host on that game server. The replication layer allows the game server and the host to be in separate places, thus making the client's connection to the game immune to disconnections in the event of a server crash. In theory, CIG has this invite-only testing environment called Evocati. People who, are, who participate must sign an NDA Recently, some of the restrictions of that NDA were relaxed, so participants are now allowed to talk about their experiences, and CIG has begun publishing an Evocati testing roadmap. Last week, the replication layer was tested in Evocati for the first time, and Star Citizen game clients were not disconnected when a server crashed. The game clients recovered and resumed after a few minutes. It wasn't smooth, but the client stayed connected. I cannot impress upon you more just how 
monumental an achievement this is. But that's just the start. Static server meshing was also tested. The Stanton system and the new Pyro system were running on two separate servers, connected to the replication layer. Clients were able to connect to the replication layer and the two testing servers at the same time and even recovered from crashes. But the main feature of the technology is the ability for the game server to hand off a client over to another server seamlessly. Because basically a game world could be divided up into segments, each one residing on a different server. And as you moved through the game world, you moved from server to server with no loading screens. Nobody in the gaming industry has tech like this. Again, Dual Universe tried and gave up. CIG demonstrated the prototype working at CitizenCon in 2023, but a scaled up test hasn't happened yet. But that changes this week. The junk gates between Stanton and Pyro will be opened for the first time ever. Players in Evocati will finally see the potential of server meshing in action, but that was static server meshing. The ultimate goal is dynamic server meshing. How the game world is subdivided between servers will automatically happen based on player density in various areas. Servers with empty areas could be reallocated to load balance areas with higher player densities. Techniques like time dilation in EVE Online wouldn't work well with a game like Star Citizen. Thus, it has taken a dynamic distributed computing approach to solve the same problem. These technical challenges are not the only reason Star Citizen is still in Alpha. From day one, the single player game Squadron 42 has been CIG's top priority. The main reason is Star Citizen inherits features from Squadron 42, since both use the same engine. The Kickstarter promised that Squadron 42 development would be transparent, and that hasn't been the case until recently. We really didn't know the status of Squadron 42 beyond a monthly report emailed to backers until the announcement at CitizenCon last year that the game was feature complete. This lack of openness from CIG about Squadron 42 has been the biggest source of frustration for the backers and their biggest criticism of the project. Since it was CIG's top priority, Squadron 42 consumed the most resources and Star Citizen's development severely lagged behind. Now with Squadron 42 feature complete, CIG has begun to restructure, thus moving resources towards Star Citizen related projects, which have been in limbo for months if not years. Next major patch, Alpha 3.23, will contain many completed features from Squadron 42. With more people working on Star Citizen development should speed up, and we're finally starting to see evidence of this. How much longer will it take for the game to be finished is a question nobody can answer, but will it be finished? I think I can safely answer that with a definite yes. As PEZ and server meshing mature, there is nothing currently blocking the way. Alpha 4.0 is expected to finally bring the Pyro system into the Persistent Universe sometime near the end of this year. We should also expect a release date for Squadron 42 at least by this year's CitizenCon. Whether you're a backer or just curious about Star Citizen, things are finally starting to look up. I know I'm really looking forward to the features coming in Alpha 3.23 which will replace the barely working flash-based temporary features that are in place now. I've been Mike the Zorch. If you like this video, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I also urge you to follow me on X and check out the Gamers Bay community on MeWe. You'll find their links in the video description below. Until next time, stay positive and have fun gaming.